smell something, the animal was there. Fur, uh, maybe half of an animal that's eaten on the trail. It's like, oh, there was an animal here. And then we get into their favorite thing. What else would the animal leave behind? Yeah. 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 Four letters. yeah, there you go. David <laughs> knows the rhyme, right? Yeah. And they'll usually say poop. You say, what's the scientific term? And they don't usually know it. Yeah. And the, what does the rhyme? Starts with an S and ends with a T and it comes out of you and it comes out of me. And it's not <laughs> what you're thinking. <laughs> scat. And then I'll reach into my bag and say, let me show you some animal scat. And they kind of freak out like, oh my God, he has poop in there. It's like, no, I have this. And then I'll hold this up. And ask them, point to the mountain lion scat, point to the coyote, what's the deer look like? Mm. So this is a good thing to have. You can get this from a company called Acorn Naturalist. They sell these things and all different colors. I used to have a green one and I like the orange one. You could contrast a little better than the green one. And then talk about the scat a little bit. If you know about it, again, I, I like that kind of stuff. So I'll talk about it and look, look at the coyote scat and look at the mountain lion and you see the difference? Mountain lion scat looks, you know, coyote scat looks kind of solid along the whole thing. It's got the little twist at the end, but a lot of them do that. Uh, but look at the mountain lion. See how it's kind of segmented? More like a, a Tootsie Roll. You guys ever read a Tootsie Roll? Mm -hmm. that's, that's made of mountain lion scat. No, it's, it looks like, you know, it's segmented like mountain lion scat, right? And then talk about why that might be. What, you know, anybody have a cat at home? Do you have a cat? What's their tongue feel like? Oh, it's like sandpaper. Yeah, they lick the meat off the bone. Dogs chew it, so they get more chips of bone into their system, so their intestines are rolling that the whole time, so their scat comes out differently than a cat that doesn't have to do that, and it just kind of... So that's an interesting thing to talk about. Um, and kids, they love talking about poop. You know, about Shumash Home, a picture. You guys should all have this. If you don't, you know, contact Deborah or me. We have these in our files. Um, talk about the Shumash Homes, how it's made out of willow, because willow was flexible. What else does willow give us? Then you could get into the thing about aspirin and salicin and how your gut converts uh, salicin to a salicylic acid and all the uh, stuff that Dr. Adams talks about in his book, Healing with Medicinal Plants in the West. If we come across a wood rat nest, we used to have a great one on Enskager, gone. We used to have one up in the tree on it, gone. Um, come across a wood rat nest, talk about the wood rat. If you guys don't know about the wood rat, let me know and I'll send you a whole paper on the wood rat about how they have different uh, chambers in their homes and how they have a bathroom in there. And you can talk about bathrooms and, you know, no, they don't have flush toilets like you guys, but they have a bathroom. So why would they want to go to the bathroom inside? And the kids usually catch on pretty quick. Oh, maybe there's a predator outside. And so talk about that kind of stuff. And then how do the wood rats alert other wood rats? Because there's usually more than one nest. If there's a predator, they bang their tail against a tree or they do the little clanking with their teeth and you have all the kids go and you can kind of hear it it echoes through um, um, so when I start out which we'll do we'll talk about dangers on the trail so I'm just giving you everything that's in my pack and then we'll actually do the real walk uh, so I'll talk about ticks arachnid family like spiders and you know, what do ticks fall off so I'll carry a picture carry a picture of poison oak show them when we talk we'll start out about that more advanced classes this is a really really close-up image of the stomas on a leaf so when you start talking about transpiration and how plants give us oxygen and how poison oak you know talk about what it can do to us and how some people are minorly some people are not affected some are minorly affected other people their whole face uh, swells up their eyes swell shut they need to go to the hospital they need to get prednisone and then is it a good plant or a bad plant you know that kind of thing and get into the whole thing about oxygen and how animals can use it and just because it hurts us doesn't mean it's a bad plant um, that's kind of everything oh, I do have this this is kind of something I don't know if David was there at that, that thing Peter Rice and Doug did with this but oh yeah yeah, yeah. you can get into a whole topic yeah. about how everything out here is interconnected all right so you get all the kids and this will work you know with 50 kids it doesn't matter get all the kids together so come on over here and then Randy, come on, come on up. Let's get like just a this few like, of you. This is like magic. It's Show amazing. You. So David, yeah. So you, you guys can see, but we'll hold this. So we have this little deal, and everybody hold hands. I know we're in, in oh, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> we're all vaccinated <laughs> multiple times. Yeah. yeah. And I've had COVID twice. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, I don't want to hold her hand. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll grab the end of this, David. I'm super and if anything breaks in that chain, Randy, yep. 
Yeah. Enough good. You guys can break hands. Yeah. 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 All right, so we're all interconnected, and you, okay, you know, wait, where what's we get in that? there? <laughs> yeah, no, what <laughs> is, uh, Amazon. Where do we get everything these days? In the Rockies, we have mostly poison oak, and then I'll show them that little laminate I showed you guys earlier. I'll save a little time here, but I'll hold it up and show them. Look for this, okay? Leaves of three, or if there's poison oak close by, I'll take them to it at that point. Like at the tang, it's right there. Talk about it right there. But leaves of three, let it be as the rhyme. There's plenty of safe plants that have leaves of three. And then when I get to the poison oak, I'll explain it's just a leaf. It's three leaflets, but we don't want to get too technical with the kids. So poison oak can give, about 80% of people can get a rash anywhere from mild to very severe. And that's when you can ask, is poison oak a good plant or a bad plant? Or you can wait till you get to the poison oak, which we'll see in a few minutes. And then we can uh, use those laminates. So I'll give those out in just a minute. To, and we'll switch leaders as, as we do things. And it's something to be aware of. But what's, what do you call an animal that's awake at night and sleeping during the day? Nocturnal. Nocturnal, excellent. Mountain lions are not nocturnal, though. I got a new word for you kids, fifth graders here. Crepuscular. Can you guys all say crepuscular? <laughs> crepuscular. They are crepuscular animals, that, which means they are twilight hunters. They hunt when the sun is coming up. They hunt when the sun is going down, and in between they're bedded down resting. So that's a crepuscular animal. So this time of day, typically we won't see one. It won't. It's not impossible. But let me tell you guys something. There have been, in the last 30 years, in all of Southern California, according to Fish and Wildlife Statistics, there have been three mountain lion fatalities. Three. Think about the thousands and thousands of people on all the trails every weekend. Your odds are better. Now, I won't say this to the kids. I'm going to tell you as adults. Your odds are better, and you can look this up, of getting killed by a champagne cork than and people get killed every year by that cork flying out <laughs> hitting them in the head than getting them killed by a mountain lion. Okay, with the kids, I'll say your odds are better of getting struck by lightning than getting killed by a mountain lion. It's just doesn't happen. But if you happen to see one, what do we do? Okay, what, what, what do they eat? What do mountain lions like to eat? Go with deer. deer. They eat a lot of deer, right? So what's the first thing we want to do? We don't want to look like a deer. <laughs> All right? Right. Don't and, and they'll laugh about that, but it's true because you get botanists and people that are on their hands and knees, they're the ones most susceptible to a mountain lion attack than an adult that's standing up. But we never run. What does a deer do when it sees a mountain lion? It runs. It's used to their prey running. We don't run. Okay, we stand still, we hold our ground. Mountain lions do like to go for the back of the neck. So if I'm out there and I do see one, which I have seen before and it's really rare, I will take my hiking stick and I will walk like this. And that way if it does happen to pounce in the back of my neck, it's gonna bounce off from this hiking stick and the mountain lion's gonna walk away pretty disappointed at that point. All right, I am very allergic to cats, so I do carry Benadryl in case I am attacked by a western fence lizard. So I keep that covered while I do it, and then I show them the lizard and do the talk I did with you guys earlier, how the blue-bellied lizard and such are the western fence lizard, and then I'll show it, and I'm like, yeah, why do they call it the blue-bellied lizard? And some of the kids will, oh, because it has a blue belly. Awesome, smart. What about staying on the trail? So the, you know, What's that? Uh, staying on the trail. Right, so then I'll get into ticks a little bit. So ticks are in the arachnid family, just like spiders. And how do ticks attach to us? Who knows how ticks come come to us? Catch jump. Up. Yeah. Jump They're up. in bushes. You're brushing up against them. Brush. yeah, brushing up against, right? Brush. Who thinks they jump out of trees like Vietnam yeah. paratroopers? No. You're going to be surprised how many people still think that. They don't. They don't jump out of trees and, and paratrooper down on your head. I hear people, oh, I'm going to wear a hat because of ticks. I was like, okay, that'll work for you. <laughs> they attach, you know, low-lying brush, and they're out there feeling for something to go by, and they'll attach to it. So if you stay on the trail, you're not going to get ticks for sure. All right, so I don't go into it too deep, but that's, I'll talk about staying on the trail. And that goes for poison oak, too. Stay with me. If I tell you, you know, it's a narrow trail, go single file. Trips and falls. That really is the most dangerous. So watch where you're footing, watch where you're walking, and so on. Um, so that's kind of my introduction, what I do with the kids. I want to alleviate any danger, anything they're worried about. I want to let them know this is going to be a safe walk. We're not going to do that, you know, and I count the kids and, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I would let the teacher know that I always try to end with, you know, close to as many as we start with as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'll start my walk, and, and then we'll, since we're fifth graders, we can use these cards, and um, 
And what I'll do with these cards, again, is they just hold on to all the cards. If I come up to something, and I know it's in my cards, and sometimes i got to look through them and memorize this first, <laughs> I'll let the kid talk about it. So, so you hand out the individual cards, or you just nope, give them a just like package? this, and they go through the whole, yeah, just like that. So How many do you bring? As, depends. Um, like I was saying, what you'll do is about a week before your hike in that season, go out and take pictures of what's there. But mostly I'll go to where there's the, the I'm sorry, the Valley Oak. Um, but sometimes I'll go to where they both are, the Coast Live Oak and the Valley Oak, so that they can see the contrast. Hmm. So the Valley Oak here, this this is an interesting one because it's actually two trees that kind of grew right next to each other. So that's an interesting thing to see. Um, I don't see a lot going on yet. There's there's no acorns or anything to show the kids this time of year, and the leaves aren't really big enough. That's why I have that laminate that shows that uh, Valley Oak. Holes. Snakes find it hard to dig holes, having no hands. Most of the holes are made by ground squirrels or gophers. Snakes can occupy holes once made. Or you can ask the kids, which is I even like to do more, is who makes the holes? 90% of the kids are going to say snakes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, guys, show me what a snake's hands look like. And they're like, oh, <laughs> man, that doesn't work out well. So then I'll explain, you know, gophers, usually pocket gophers and ground squirrels. Um, and if it's, the hole's kind of at an angle, if you see it going in at an angle, that's more typical of a ground squirrel. If the hole is going almost straight down and there's dirt around it, that's more typical of a pocket gopher. You know, at a, at a certain age, your mind just kind of forgets stuff. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you, you guys probably aren't quite there yet. Um, there's an app, and it's called Picture This. I'm going to show you guys how it works. So, picture this. Look at the ear. Is there a deer out there? <laughs> so look at the leaves and look at the pictures. Keep that going. <laughs> it's not a yucca for sure. Not a wild cucumber. Uh, definitely not elderberry. Must be the last one. <laughs> oh my goodness, there you are. So, and this is a... This I took out here, sometimes you'll see it like reddish when it, and real mm -hmm. oily and such. So this is the poison oak, and that's when you can discuss, is this a good plant or a bad plant? It, what do all plants give us? Let them answer that question. They all give us oxygen. Animals use this plant. When you hear something interesting is it doesn't affect animals. Your dog can run through poison oak, and it's not going to get a rash. But you go and pet your dog, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> so give the kids a little lesson. So remember, it's the oils that you don't want. So what I would do is I would reach down, grab some dirt, and rub it on wherever I touch to help get the oils off. Then when I get back to where there's a bathroom, I want to wash up with soap and water. Uh, do I want to use hot water or cold water, kids? Hot? Anybody else have any other ideas? Cold. Now, what does hot do? It opens your pores. It's going to let it in deeper. Use cool, cold water. Um, it's just like if you've ever changed the motor oil in your car. This is an oil. So you know how hard you have to scrub when you get oil on your hands, motor oil? Same deal. Use a good dishwashing soap like Dawn or something like that and really scrub it. Just like you would if you can't see this, but just like you would if you could see that motor oil. Scrub that 